All right, guys, another uh, aquaponic system update. I'm going to be uh, working on this today. This is going to be one of the uh, w deep wicking beds, is what we're calling them, because there's a deep amount of uh, soil in them. Uh, there'll be uh, six total leaves in the system. This will be the second one when it's completed. And I kind of wanted to show it to you before I started completing it so you could actually see how it works. So we'll actually watch it function here in a second. First thing you might be wondering, what is all this? Well, this is not necessary. This is some scrap... Uh, perforated drain pipe that I had laying around. It was given to me by a friend who didn't need it. It was left over from a job he did. I don't know that I'd recommend using this because it's kind of expensive unless you can get it as scrap. So you can see what it looks like there. And it's got this, uh, this fabric on it. Well, that fabric is designed to get wet and not break down in the ground. Well, that's perfect for wicking. So I wanted to make sure that it would wick. So I dropped a piece of it in the water here and you can see the water in a couple minutes is already wicked up to here. So this will be a good wick to help transfer water from below up into the soil layer. Once it gets in the soil layer, the soil is going to do all the wicking uh, for you with a good soil mixture. So uh, that's just a little add on there. Also was tied up with some of that nylon rope right there when he gave it to me. So I dropped that in there to see, well, that rope wick, because it's nylon. So it's not going to break down and, and get ruined over time and stop working. Uh, and it also is kind of wet up about an inch, so that nylon rope would work as a wick. So it's a good idea. It's not always necessary. It's a good idea to have something getting down into your water up into your soil layer. This pipe right here will set the level of the water. It's going to give me about 14 or about 12 inches of dirt because I'm not going to fill the, the bed all the way to the top. We'll come to about right there with the top and leave some space on the top. And uh, that's, there's no problem with earth wicking that far. And especially once your plants get the roots a couple of inches down in the soil, you're, you're good to go forever at that point. Uh, that piece of pipe there, so again, it's just a piece of scrap pipe. So what's with all the scrap pipe? It takes up space. This is all going to get filled in with lava rock. And that stuff's about $90 a yard. And frankly, I'm almost out of it. I'm hoping I have enough to get two of these done. So all this is doing is this just scrap we have lying around of anything that's in earth that's not going to have any uh, negative effect on the system. There'll be plenty of rock in there for filtration. With the number of beds we have, we have no problem with filtration. All this is is a one-inch pipe teed off with a bunch of holes drilled in it. I drilled it with something called a unibit or a step bit. And really, it's the holes on the bottom that are setting the level. So the level is right about there. These are all insurance. I just think it's cheap to drill a lot of holes for insurance. What will happen next is I'll fill this up with rock until the pipe is buried, until the pipe is just buried with rock. And then I'll have going down into that rock a couple pieces of this. That's going to be my wicking material. And that'll come up. We'll kind of hold it up a couple inches into the soil layer as we go. But before we do that, we'll put down a layer of weed blocker, just landscaping fabric, the stuff that you put down to block weeds in a typical landscaping job, like for pretty flowers out in front of a suburban house. You don't need anything special, just one or two layers of that. And then we'll put our dirt on top of it and we'll cut holes through it. And that'll go down through the holes into the rock all the way to the bottom to help get the wicking action started and primed. We'll fill it up with dirt up to here. And then we'll turn this valve on right here. When we turn that valve, it'll start running water. And what I've done is I've sleeved the valve. So that, that pipe only goes down about that far, about right there. Uh, this this piece of half inch and I sleeve it with one and a quarter mainly because that's what I had around that's big enough to sleeve it with that I don't need for something else and down at the bottom I pop some holes in it that's just to make sure that when we drop water it's going all the way down below the, the divider and getting into the bottom and causing water to circulate and move as it dumps out this T that T is probably overkill it could probably be about that long both directions to be plenty I believe in overkill because um, there's no way that thing right there is going to get 100% stopped up, especially with the speed of the water move. Now, the interesting thing is I really don't want water up to this level while I'm filling it. I'd really rather have water as down as possible. And what you're looking at right there, that's the system level. So this line right here is, the, is your drain line, and the system itself is right there. That's, that's the, the stasis level of the system. So it will never drain down beyond that. It could evaporate, but it'll never drain down beyond that le level right there. But what I can do for you is I can go ahead and turn this on. And I might run it a little faster than I really want to right now just to get it up because there's no need to run it that fast. We run these just to trickle, but that way we have a constant flow of water through this system. 
it'll take a little while to fill up. It fills up, it'll start running over. Now when I want to drain it back down to the system level before I fill it, I'll just pull this connector out right there and it'll it'll drain down to there. But any minute now, you guys should see it you should see it draining. And all this is there's a bulkhead that comes in these tanks. It's just right in there. We have a standard PVC fitting and a pipe fit to it, run to our drain. The only specialized piece, and you could probably get away without doing it this way, is this piece of pipe right here. My buddy David took it on a lathe and turned it down so you could insert it into that bulkhead. What that did, it let us use the factory bulkhead instead of kind of a fancy bulkhead with a way to attach to it on both sides and be able to tee off to there. But if, if, you, if you didn't have the ability to turn down your pipe with a lathe, uh, what you could do is just buy a separate bulkhead, remove the factory bulkhead, and get a bulkhead that has an attachment on both sides. If you have a lathe, it's a hell of a lot easier that way. So there we go. We've now, you can see that's actually tilted that way a little bit. So let me turn this down. Just a trickle there. That's probably about, maybe even a little hotter than we would run it. Right there. And you can see that water just holds its level there. And that's all that it's going to do. Underneath all that, you know, you see dirt and there's magic going on. This is it. So what I'll do, I'll get it drained down. I'll start filling it with rock and I'll get everything set up. And if I get that far today, I'll come back and shoot another video that shows you kind of with it that far but without the dirt in it yet. But I think you get the idea. These things are super easy to do. Really super easy. And like I said, if you notice there, the lower holes are set in the level. There's no water going out these holes. These are insurance holes. Because there's so many daggone holes in there. I mean, that's running like a sieve. It's running down our drain right through there. You can see this is what you call a, an air vent. This is making sure we don't ever end up with a siphon on the system. It also creates pressure on the system to make sure you get a better return. I'm going to go ahead and close that off. And I need to get up and hold on to that when I pull it off so I don't mess nothing up. And let, I'll let that drain out. And uh, I'll get on to filling it, and maybe I'll be back with you today. Maybe I won't. Okay, so kind of a progress report. We've got lava rock filled up to the top of the pipe. You see the pipe's right there, just barely covered. And then we've got that uh, nylon covering from the uh, drain pipe pushed down into the lava rock. And when I lay the landscape fabric in, I'll cut a little hole in it, and I'll pull it through. And as I fill it with dirt, I'll kind of stand it up like that. And that'll give kind of a, a starter action to the wick. I almost don't want to show you guys this because I want people freaking out about, well, what am I going to use for wicking material? Do I need to go get that stuff, Jack? Listen, this is lava rock. See all those holes? See? Lots of holes. If you set that in water, just like a, an eighth of an inch of water, and you come back an hour later, it's going to be wet right there. It is going to wick water up by itself. And the only thing separating this rock from the dirt it's going to be a thin layer of landscape fabric, which, which ironically is not much different than this stuff. If you just threw the landscape fabric down and filled this with a good soil mix, something that will give you a good absorption rate, it's probably going to work anyway. So don't overthink this. But there, you know, this is kind of a kickstart. Anything that's not going to biologically break down rapidly, like cotton, cotton will wick beautifully, but it, it'll rot in, in a single season. Probably won't hurt nothing, but, I mean, it's not going to keep doing the job. Nylon rope, this type of material, anything that's probably not going to break down, and anything that's not going to do something bad to your system, something like, you know, don't put, I don't know, poison ivy in there or something like that, uh, it'll be just fine. So I'm going to start getting some dirt in it. I don't know if we'll finish this one today or not, but uh, I'm going to give it hell. All right, change of plans. I thought I had a roll of uh, landscape fabric around here, and I couldn't find it, and I want to get this bed as close to done today as possible. Sun's still pretty high in the sky, so I got some work time left ahead of me. What you're looking at is perlite. <clears throat> perlite is basically a little form of uh, puffed rock, and it's used in potting mix and stuff. It's the stuff when you buy a, a potted plant and you water it, it annoyingly floats to the surface and, and floats off the side of the plant. But what it does is it lightens soil. That's why they use it in potting mix. It's not what it's going to do here. 
it's going to form a barrier. I got about an inch of it here. I had about a half a bag, maybe more than half, a, but less than half a bag of it left from my last project that I used it in, which was a wicking bed project. So I went ahead and used it. Uh, when I did my last wicking beds, Nick Ferguson said, you know, instead of putting down labscape fabric, put down about an inch of perlite as a barrier. It's cheap, it's readily available, and it'll, it'll actually wick because this stuff feels, if you look at it, it's been outside, it feels pretty wet right now. It absorbs water. So it'll actually form a good transport barrier, but it'll keep the dirt out of the rock. Now, as some of you that watched me for a while know, I, got, I, I made a decision that those wicking beds would be better serving me as ponds as part of my aquatic system, and I converted them over. So after they were there about a year, I actually got to dig them up and see what happened. And, I, you know, I believed it when Nick said it, because when Nick Ferguson tells you something will work, especially in this world, it probably will. But now I don't believe it. I know it, because when I dug it up, the layer of perlite was absolutely pristine. I mean, when you dug the dirt off it, it was white. And when you went a little bit below the surface, it was snow white. And, and no dirt made it from the, the layer above to the layer below. It looks like a perfect stratification that you'd see in a, in a sample of like the KT boundary when the, the dinosaurs went extinct. So I know this works. So now you can see what I got going on. If you go just under here, you know, I got about an inch of it. My lava rock's there. My tea is right down there. Water comes in here, overflows through the tea, comes out the overflow, goes back down in the system, and we'll get to filling this with soil once we get it filled with soil, we can plant it. We'll catch up with you later. All right, guys, you can see the automatic time lights are on to keep the quail laying. Sun setting in the sky out there, and uh, I'm done. I actually want to bring the soil level up to about right here. Uh, so I got a little bit more work to do, but it's not going to really be any different. This is a completed bed, basically. I just want to bring the soil level up some. The water is coming down. It's cycling, just like you saw it. It's going out to tea. It's coming down here. It's venting. And it's going back down and returning to the main system in the greenhouse. Everything's going. The reason this is taking so long is we had a couple shallow wicking beds uh, where we had a lava rock on the bottom and we had soil mixed like this on the top. We decided we didn't want them, so we tore them out. Eh. Well, it's easy to take them out. Putting stuff back is a problem because all the dirt is mixed in with the uh, lava rock. So I'll show you what I got going on out here. Everything looks like a wreck right now. I have to convince my wife when she comes out here later. Don't worry about that. It's all going to get buried in the next bed. There's going to be junk everywhere. <laughs> uh, the, the definition of junk to a man and a woman are entirely different. So what I'm doing, I'm using this little sifter right here. And uh, I'm using these uh, concrete mixing trays to sift stuff out. And this is what I'm talking about. I got very little left, but I brought enough left that I'll be able to get enough soil out of there to be at least close if I have to bring a bag in or two, that's no big deal, to finish that bed. And I'll have enough rock that I'll be close at least to being able to do another wicking bed. Now you can see over here, this is the fruits of my labor. Not only did I get all that soil mixed, but I got three buckets of lava rock sifted out of there. So that's where we're at. And uh, it's one of those things where I want them, there's nine beds in here. I want them all finished. I want them all running. But uh, dude, that's just, uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I got a lot of stuff coming up in the next couple weeks with a workshop and all. If I can get one or two more of them done and planted, I'll have plenty of production for the early spring and we can just keep working on them as we move into later spring. But uh, we'll catch up with you guys later. Everything's rocking and rolling. For those that maybe this is the first video you've seen by me when I talk about the system returning. This is the heart of the system right here. Here's our pump, our solids filter, two 330-gallon IBCs. They're pumping the water up into that aviary coming back here. Got three flood and drain beds in place. Uh, primarily, a flood and drain is mostly for filtration, but we do have some production coming out of it as well. Fish are happy. Everything's looking good. That tomato plant will be getting planted soon, and I'll catch up with you guys with another edition of... Uh, I guess we'd call this aquaponics and aquatic updates soon.